Hello Fear Seekers, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be diving into some disturbing, allegedly true, Ouija board horror stories. If you enjoy the content and want to help the channel grow, consider leaving a like and subscribing to keep up with future videos. Now without further ado, sit back, put any idea of sleep away, and get ready to ferment your fears. In the early 1970s, my husband and I were living in a townhouse in a suburb just outside Chicago. It being the 70s and us being in our mid-twenties, we were fascinated by the paranormal and the spooky goodness that came with living in a historic area. By this time, we had had several seances with friends involving Ouija boards. We'd done the usual, give us a sign, and at least on two specific occasions, felt that something beyond the natural had occurred in response. In the first instance, all the candles went out as if something had swept through the room. No doors or windows were open that would have caused a cross breeze, and the AC was just not that powerful when it kicked on. The second time, the whole group began to feel an ominous and overwhelming sense of doom and gloom. We collectively decided to go outside for relief, only to find a huge, dark cloud hovering directly over the house, covering our immediate area, which then quickly dissipated to a clear and starry sky. At other times, we definitely had incidents where we laughingly blamed each other for moving the planchette, but those previous two instances were just too eerie. I will add to say that I do believe that people are fully capable of manifesting energy on their own, or in large groups, which can lend itself to paranormal encounters. Of course, once we had finally decided it was freaky enough that we were going to stop fooling with it, my mother said, Oh, my old friend Eleanor does automatic writing. Why don't we invite her over and see if she gets anything? My mother then explained what Eleanor described as not so much as entities speaking through her, but whispering in her ear and speaking to her. So we set a date, and they come over in the afternoon. We briefly engaged in small talk and pleasantries, after which we pull out the Ouija board and got started. After a while, nothing of note had particularly happened, and Eleanor said, This isn't working. I just need to disengage for a bit. And she went into another room to lay down. A little later, we began to hear noises from the bedroom, but it didn't sound like Eleanor. The voice had a distinctly different cadence and timbre. My husband, thinking quickly, decided whatever was happening needed to be recorded, and grabbed a tape deck. With the recorder running, we began to ask Eleanor questions, starting with, Who are you? She, in this completely different voice, claimed to be a relative of my mother on her father's side. Note, even having been friends with my mother for years, Eleanor would have had no reason to know this person. Even I had no idea who this person was. So, we prompt my mother, ask her something about the family, and she did, receiving answers that were somewhat vague but made sense to her, tying in with knowledge she had of the family and this person specifically. As this was happening, we could see that Eleanor was obviously becoming agitated, Thinking we knew what we're doing, we told the spirit that we were done and asked Eleanor to come back, trying to roust her from this trance-like state. We had some success, and as she came back to herself, we asked her about what her experience was. She said, I could feel and hear everything, but I couldn't control it. I couldn't come back on my own. It was like watching someone else in my own body. I never want to do that again. We fully agreed. This is not something we wanted to mess with or touch again. We couldn't explain it. We were in way over our head. That was it. However, we did tell Eleanor that we had recorded everything and asked if she wanted to hear the playback. Absolutely, she said. When we first listened to the recording, our questions were much more audible than the responses we were receiving. Keep in mind that the tape deck had been pretty much equidistant between us and Eleanor. In the end, we parted company amicably, but all agreed that that was it. 
No more seances. No more Ouija board. It wasn't worth it. Several days later, we had some friends over and were discussing the incident. Of course, they asked to hear the tape. My husband set up the cassette player, inserted the tape, and pressed play. Except... You could hear his voice. You could hear my voice. You could hear my mother's voice. All of us asking questions, loud and clear. But the responses were just gone. It was very clear that there was meant to be a back and forth, as the pauses and questions absolutely indicated a response had been received. But there was only small static and silence where the voice had been. Eventually, we could also hear Eleanor's voice as she was pulled from the trance. We kept the recording for several years, but the responding voice could never be heard again on subsequent playback. That was absolutely the last time I ever explored anything having to do with the paranormal. This happened around 10 years ago, and it still gives me the creeps to this day. I was visiting my then best friend, let's call him Troy, and for some reason we really liked trying to contact the other side using a homemade Ouija board to see if spirits were real. We didn't do it just once, but several times. Stupid, I know, but when you're a teenager you do many stupid things. We always strictly followed the rules of the game, though. But even if you follow the rules, it doesn't mean evil spirits won't be coming, and this story is an example of that. It was me, Troy, and two other friends with us. Let's call them Liz and Natalie. It was kind of late, and it was dark outside, and Troy said we should play some Ouija board. We all agreed to it, though Natalie and Liz were pretty scared because they had never played before. We set up the Ouija board we made, picked up a glass that isn't too heavy or big, and closed all the doors and windows. After explaining the rules to Liz and Natalie, we started by seeing if we had someone with us, and the glass moved. We asked our questions. I don't really remember the questions that we asked. It went pretty normal at first. The spirit answered normally, but after a while the glass started to move all over the place. It moved so fast and you couldn't make out words from the letters. I don't know if it started to speak another language or something. I know when the glass starts to move like that, it's a very bad sign and you should say goodbye immediately when this starts to happen. We all were pretty scared at this point. I saw the paper we drew the Ouija board on and it started to move, like there was a breeze of wind, but we were sure we closed every door and window. I felt a presence next to me and it felt so cold and the paper kept moving. And before we had time to say goodbye, Liz's sweater had caught fire. It all happened so fast. We managed to put it out fairly quickly. The weird part is that after we put the fire out, there were no signs that her sweater had burned. No traces of a fire and no smell of burning. It made us all wonder if it were just some kind of illusion. I'm still very confused about it today. We said our goodbyes right after this because this spirit or demon went out of control and who knows what could have happened if we would have kept going. I don't even want to know. After we said our goodbyes and closed up, we heard a loud noise sounding like some kind of fire alarm, and when we went to the living room to see where it came from, it stopped. We were all very confused and scared after this. I just wonder if it even happened or if it was just an illusion that we all saw. One thing I know, though, is that I will never play with a Ouija board again, and I suggest you stay away from it as well. You never know what can happen, especially if you don't follow the rules. This experience took place just shy of two years ago while I was living in a step-down program in Oregon. Located in a town notorious for the tweakers, I had many unsettling experiences during the two or so years I spent there, but I'll save those for another day. The campus consisted of three buildings that lined the same block, a fourth building about a five minute walk away called HQ, and a fifth building a few blocks over in the other direction called Michael's Place. 
There was the boarding house, the men's living quarters, and the sunflower house, the women's living quarters. Located between the two houses sat the AC. One thing to note about the AC is its history. Before it was purchased and renovated by the founders of the program, it used to be a red cross, with the morgue in the basement. One evening, I was approached by a couple of my friends. One of them had found a Ouija board in the boarding house and wanted to see if we could get it to work. Naturally, we decided the best place to use the board would be in the AC due to its past. So we all gather in the hallway that connects the entrance of the building to the study lab. Since it's after productive hours, most of the students are hanging out in the study lab socializing, so the environment is pretty loud and chaotic. We probably sat there for 20 to 30 minutes asking question after question, anything to make contact with the spirit. We were all disappointed when nothing happened. Being the stupid 19 year old I was, I asked if I could borrow the Ouija board that night. The friend who had found it handed it over and didn't bat an eye. I knew you were not supposed to use a Ouija board by yourself, yet I still did. That night was one of the most terrifying experiences regarding the paranormal that I have ever been through. The living space of the Sunflower House was split up into three apartments and a communal area connected by a locking door to the staff office. The first apartment was downstairs to your left when you first entered the house. To your right was the common area. Directly in front of you were the stairs leading to the second floor. At the top of the landing there was an apartment to your left and to your right. Each apartment consisted of a bedroom that could sleep four people, a shared bathroom, a shared kitchen, and in two, a shared living room. Instead of a living room space, the left apartment on the second floor had what was known as the single room. In order to be moved into that room, a student would build trust and prove that they were responsible enough to be placed in that room. I lived in each of the apartments during my stay at the program, and I was living in the single room when this experience took place. Walking in, there was a twin bed shoved against the same wall as the door. On the opposite wall, beneath two windows, sat a dresser. My closet was located on the far end of the room, the doorway between the bed and the dresser. The room was small and snug, with old wooden floorboards that groaned loudly underfoot. Since I knew it was dangerous to use a Ouija board on your own, I performed a couple of spells I wrote. I am a Wiccan and I practice witchcraft, asking the goddess to keep me safe from spiritual attack and to protect myself and those around me during my session that night. I smudged the board to clear it of any energies it may have absorbed as well as my room and my person. I blessed one of my crystal pendants and wore it around my neck as another safeguard. I positioned myself on the floor between my bed and dresser, the board in front of me with my back to the closet. There was a full-length mirror mounted to the wall inside my closet. Just the idea of sitting in the dark staring into my reflection made my skin crawl. Lighting two candles, I placed them on either end of the board and set up a few crystals along the top edge of the board. Placing both index fingers on the planchette, I reached out to any spirits that were willing to communicate with me directing them towards the light of the candle flames and the sound of my voice. After a few minutes, I received an answer. To be completely honest, I cannot remember what questions I asked that spirit. I want to assume I asked its name and any other basic questions one asks while using a Ouija board. What I do remember is the fear I felt and what I experienced after ending the session that night. I have a fascination with the supernatural and take an interest in the dark, twisted, and macabre. I also am easily frightened. Needless to say, I didn't last very long before I got too freaked out and closed the session. I was polite and respectful, properly ending the session and closing the portal as I had been taught, and I did not anger the entity I came in contact with. But for one reason or another, said entity decided it still wanted my company. I remember blowing out the candles and immediately diving under my covers. I lay on my side facing the wall. My heart was beating rapidly. I remember the strong sensation of being watched. The air grew oppressive, almost heavy. The floorboards were creaking as if there was someone pacing around my room. I shut my eyes and started to pray, clutching the crystal I wore around my neck. 
The footsteps moved into my closet and fell silent. After a few minutes, I started to relax, hoping that whatever I had invited into my room was gone. At some point, I started to doze off, only to be jolted awake as the noises started up again. Whatever it was would walk the length of my room, slowly, deliberately. I could feel the entity looking down at me. After some time, it would make its way back to the closet. This lasted most of the night. I spent the entire night on my side, begging for the goddess to protect me and keep me safe. I was absolutely petrified. Eventually, sleep did come. Whether I had passed out from fear or plain exhaustion, I am not sure. The following morning, the atmosphere of my room felt noticeably lighter. When I gave the Ouija board back to my friend, he asked if anything had happened. Unsure of what to tell him, I said I didn't want to talk about it. Over the course of the next few days, the activity in my room decreased in intensity and then stopped altogether. I've used a Ouija board twice in my life prior to this, both times with groups of other people, and I don't think I am going to touch one again. Heed the warning of someone who didn't listen. Do not use the Ouija board alone. I have never dabbled in anything besides homemade tarot cards, but my aunt did. She was known for always being very reckless and carefree. When she was about 15, she was left home alone and decided that she wanted to try a Ouija board. Whenever she's been asked why, she just tells us that she's always been curious and wanted to know if it really worked. She had to wait to be alone because my grandfather didn't allow for my aunt to dabble in practices that could go dark, with good reason. However, when they left her home alone, she decided to try it. They didn't have a Ouija board, since my grandfather would never allow it, so instead she crafted one out of wood and a sharpie. I know most of you are thinking that there's no way that would work, but there have been many cases where it has. If you provide spiritual or demonic entities with a medium they can contact you with, it doesn't matter what it is. By touching the makeshift wooden planchette with the intent of summoning something, my aunt granted whatever entity access to communicate with her, and potentially attach itself to her. Unfortunately, this is what happened. The Ouija board ended up working, much to my aunt's initial delight, and she got in contact with the spirit of an old woman. The woman told her that she could predict the future, so of course my aunt asked her questions such as, What will I study in university? Where will I be in 20 years? And how will I die? My aunt was skeptic of this woman's ability, but knew that she shouldn't ask about her death date. Even if the woman couldn't, the date would still be in my aunt's mind and most likely plague her thoughts. Anyways, the board answered, English, Canada, and the same as your mother eventually will, breast cancer. My aunt at the time thought all of these were ludicrous since she has always wanted to study the sciences in university, was from India and intended to stay there, and at the time, my grandma hadn't gotten cancer yet. So, my aunt being the ballsy and stupid kid she was, taunted the entity about her disbelief and asked the entity to prove it. So, the entity told her that my grandfather would be home one hour earlier than planned and catch her with the board. She didn't believe the entity, of course, and continued to taunt it. This in turn angered it and resulted in it becoming hostile towards my aunt. My aunt started experiencing cuts forming on her arms and they continued to travel up. She screamed and threw the planchette, right when my grandfather walked in and caught her in the act. Saying he was fuming was apparently an understatement. My grandfather, being very spiritual, closed the board properly by saying goodbye and immediately had a priest come bless the house. Afterwards, my aunt, of course, was in a lot of trouble. She tried to show my uncle the cuts received on her arms, only for them to have disappeared. The pain was still there, without any of the physical scarring. It's safe to say my aunt was petrified. The worst part? My aunt went to university to study English. After getting her bachelor's, the whole family immigrated to Canada as my grandfather's visa finally got approved. 
He was planning this for ages, but the visa took over a decade to be approved. Finally, my grandma has gotten breast cancer twice, and while she hasn't passed away yet, her time is approaching. My aunt is absolutely petrified and tells all of us this story to ensure we never dabble in any of these spiritual objects. I myself am quite the skeptic of all things spiritual and demonic in nature. I'm an atheist, ex-theist, but wonder if there is any plausibility to this because I can't deny that my aunt is always petrified at the mention of any of these objects. She is not the type to be frightened easily of anything, so it does make me question whether this is real. Have any of you had similar experiences with an entity that could predict the future or cause cuts on your arms that vanished? Or simply any sort of story revolving around contacting spirits that you think may help me understand all of this more and maybe lower my skepticism? If so, please let me know. Hey guys, glad to see you made it to the end of the video. Have you ever had a creepy experience with a Ouija board? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. If you have any stories you'd like to be narrated, be sure to send them in. Alright guys, that just about wraps up the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. So long, fear seekers. I'll see you in the next video.